Hello, my name is Brad Heller and today I want to talk to you a little bit about the philosophy behind the Heller Approach Acting Studio. A lot of people ask us what exactly is the philosophy that we teach here? Well I can tell you one of the main things that we talk about at our school. It sounds simple but keeping acting enjoyable. Keeping it fun. I can tell you from my own personal experience before I met the two people that really sort of changed my life with regards to the acting te technique that I teach I found acting to be com completely confusing, complex, not fun, and a big headache. And there were many times when I was studying acting, kind of saying to myself, why am I doing this? This isn't even fun. How is it possible that acting could have been around for thousands of years and has brought me to today if it's supposed to be a nightmare? So that kind of got me involved with my acting uh, I guess you would call him my mentor, uh, Don Richardson. And he, he wrote this great book called Acting Without Agony, an Alternative to the Method. Now this, I felt, was impossible. I didn't even understand how it could be possible to enjoy acting again. But one of the main things he talked about was that we didn't need to delve into our own personal experiences in order to evoke emotion in our body. Now what is emotion? Emotion would be I guess you could say intensity in your eyes. So that, you know, if you are, say, uh, at a bar and you're talking to somebody you're interested in, how is the viewer going to know, if they're watching this in a film, that this person that you're talking to is important? Well, one of the ways they're going to know this is through the anxiety that's going to be going on in my eyes. If I don't have that, the audience is going to think I don't really care. So if we were to agree that whatever scene you're doing, what Don Richardson talked to me about was that acting is 80% emotion. If we were to agree with that, then how do we get it? How is it that Anthony Hopkins, when he is, when he's doing Silence of the Lambs and he's saying, hello, Clarice, that he can, he can sort of burn you with the eyes. They just pierce you. How does that happen? How does he get that fire in his eyes? And at the same time, not have a nervous breakdown or a mental like breakdown every time he acts. Well, we, as I've, I've talked to you about in some of my videos, we've talked about objective and we talk about emotion. Those are the two things that create the behavior that allow us to get to where we need to go when we're acting. In acting, a lot of people have asked me, well, how do you teach? What's the technique? How does it work? Well, one of the things Don Richardson talked to me about was that acting has uh, two steps, similar to an athlete. He used to talk about a boxer. A boxer, there's two steps in learning how to box. The first phase would be learning how to hit. How do we carry our weight? How do we bob and weave? All of those things, we'll call that the preparation phase of boxing. And then we have what's called the execution phase of boxing, which is when we just get out and we fight. The acting technique that I teach is built around the philosophy that our body will remember something if we learn it. It's muscle memory. The same philosophy you would have if you were a boxer or an Olympic skier, uh, a painter. All of the arts and sports that require any sense of performance are built around muscle memory. We have the two phases of learning when we have to pre prepare and then when we have to execute, when we have to trust our work. How does that work? Well, there are going to be acting teachers out there that are going to tell you different things. And some have told me you have to do all of your scene interpretation. You have to make sure that you understand the scene and where it's going, where it's coming from, which is true. However, many acting teachers don't tell you the second step, which is how to actually let that go. Obviously, a boxer cannot be thinking about how to fight when he's fighting. He'll get knocked out. Then we have to uh, remember that there's the next phase, which is the executing. How does the boxer trust that work? That's the part that requires a tremendous amount of courage. As I've said to you, in acting, we have the part where we have to interpret the scene. We ask ourselves, okay, what's happening in the scene? What the point of it is? You know, making sure that we have the author's or the director's vision in our mind, because we are storytellers. And then we take that 
and we apply that to the preparation phase of learning about how to evoke emotion. We've talked about this in my videos, talking about the name of an emotion through a breathing exercise. If you haven't had an opportunity to, to look at that video, I go through the exercise with you. So we're going to assume that you have watched the video and you understand the idea of emotion and objective creating the behavior. So you're going to go through all of these steps of interpreting a scene, analyzing it, making sure that it's clear to you, doing the breathing exercise we talk about, making sure our objective is clear, and that's going to be the preparing. And then when the audition rolls around, we're going to execute it. There's not going to be any awareness of the objective, the breathing, the emotion, the interpretation of the scene. None of that is going to be in my head when I'm acting, when I'm executing the scene. Now, what does executing really mean? What does executing a scene and acting really mean? I mean, I'm sure you've heard this before. Just let go. Just do it. Just let go and go with it. Now, okay, that's great. And all that sounds really good. But what does it mean exactly? Well, the first thing is, as I said to you, you're going to have some teachers who are going to say, all right, prepare, prepare, prepare. And then they forget to tell you about how to execute. Then you're going to have the other side of the coin, which, and, I, and I've heard this recently, teachers out there that, which, that will say to you, don't spend too much time with the material. Don't look at it too long. Just memorize it and go with it. Now, I'm a writer and I know writers and directors, and by the time an audition actually happens, especially in a feature film, sometimes scripts have you know, gone through 20, 30 rewrites. Somebody who's been working on this script for you know, maybe three or four years, and they know this story better than anybody. And if you walk in there without preparing and without sort of asking yourself, well, what's really going on here, and taking the time to interpret the scene, then when you just sort of execute and just sort of go for it, well, how do you know you're even going to be on the right path? I've used this analogy before. It's sort of like somebody saying, okay, what I want you to do if you were a dancer. I want you to just do the dance. And if I'm, a, I'm, I'm saying, well, wait a minute, I don't really know the dance. Well, just, just go with it. Okay, I'm going to go with it. Isn't that good? I'm going with it. I'm rolling, yeah? It's so stupid when you really break it down. Where in life does it ever, is, is there ever a philosophy that says, don't do any work and you'll be great? There is the step of executing, which would be learning those dance moves so that when you do execute it, your body remembers all that work. How does this apply to acting? Well, this requires a tremendous amount of courage because you're basically saying, hey, I've done the work. Now I have to just let go and, and trust that it's in my body. So where does your brain go when you're acting in a scene? You're not going to be thinking about emotion. You're not going to be thinking about what you look like. You're not going to think about how you sound. But what do you think? Receiving. The ability to receive and listen in a scene is by far, aside from emotion, the most important thing in acting. The ability to receive and listen to what's outside of you is the most important thing to acting. Why is that so important? Well, if you really think about it, that's what you do as a person. What is inducing me to talk now? The camera. The camera is inducing me to speak. You out there are actually inducing me to speak. In everything we do, if you really break it down, it's never I say to myself, okay, put hand up to forehead and do it. It's you who's causing me to think and inducing me to put my hand up to my forehead. So as actors, we have to duplicate human behavior. You gotta be a real person. So if you're not using the mechanism of a real person, you're finished. Why? Well, because the audience needs to be able to relate to you. They need to be able to say, oh, that person I'm watching in the scene reminds me of my brother, my son, my friend. That person reminds me of when I was a kid. So if you're acting in a scene and you're not a real human being, they can't do that. They can't relate to you. So the ability to receive and trust the work is the beautiful, fun part of acting. When we get to just trust it and go, this is when you really do get to go with it and ride the wave you're on. 
I've talked to you about how acting is so much like being an athlete. Let me give you one more example. It reminds me of when I was watching the Olympics and I was watching uh, professional slalom skiing. And I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but apparently the day before the competition, these skiers get to have the opportunity to ski down the slope the day before they compete. Now, why are they doing that? To get their body familiar with the course. So they can just, when it's time to compete, have your body familiar with the course so you can just let go and ski. So think about this. You've been waiting your whole life for this competition. Finally, it's come down to today. The course is gonna last a minute long. It's all on the line now. Everybody in the known universe is watching you ski this course and it's blizzard conditions and you can't see. What do you do? Well, you have two options. You could go down the course and make sure that you're going through those flags correctly or you trust that your body will remember those flags and you commit. You fully ski down the hill. This is where the courage part falls into play. You fully ski down the hill knowing you may break your neck, knowing you may go outside of the course, knowing you may blow it. That's the key to mastering anything is, and I'm sure you may have heard this before, in order to win, Vince Lombardi said this, in order to win, you gotta be willing to fail. Now, I don't say fail lightly. I'm talking about real failure where you've spent a week preparing for an audition, every day, you know, hours and hours of preparing for that audition until finally you come into the room and going for it, knowing that they may hate you, you may suck, you may be terrible, and committing to that audition, knowing that that failure could happen. That's what mastering something means. The true ability to wield the courage to go for something, not pretending that everything's gonna be okay, but accepting that you may fail. That's the trick. I've had students who have approached me and have said to me that whenever they go to an audition, they're always sort of trying to be in a zone before they audition. And this leads me to another major part of my training, which is teaching actors to learn how to act when they are distracted. A friend of mine is a, uh, well, he was, I think he might still be a professional uh, card player, and he played on the MIT team. And he was telling me when he was training for blackjack that people would, you know, when they were training, the actual part of the training was to distract this guy so that he couldn't focus because his job was to count cards. Now, he was having to do this when people would bump into him and ask him for drinks. Would he still be able to count the cards? And that's basically the same thing we do as an audition. How many times have you done this? You're going to do your scene and you light your incense. You got your candle. It's all dark and nice and beautiful. Your, your, your mate has just given you a back rub. You're ready to go. Now, you may act your butt off, but how, who's going to see it? I'm afraid that's not really what acting is. Acting is being able to come through when the pressure is on. Not in the safety and sanctity of incense and candles. It's when things bother you. Now at my theater, when people come and observe my class, they're always thrown a little bit because somebody could be doing a scene up on stage and people walk right in. Into that door, they walk in in the middle of a scene and they sit down and they watch the scene. And you know, at first, people are kind of like, well, what's, what's going on here? You know, how does he let people walk in during the scene? Well, that's on purpose. Because that's what happens at auditions. Whenever you're at an audition, there's going to be something that's going to bother you. It could be the casting director looking at you wrong or not looking at you at all. Or her cell phone goes off. Or your cell phone goes off. And part of the training is learning how to work around the distractions we're hit with. And not pretending everything's going to be okay, but accepting that it might not be okay and doing it anyway. This part of the philosophy I learned from a wonderful woman. Her, her name is Dr. Ida Gorbis. She uh, is an associate professor at UCLA, and she runs what's called the Westwood Institute. You can look her up on the internet. She's an amazing woman. She taught me all of these wonderful tools because it didn't matter 
how clear the acting technique was to me if I was so frozen with fear and couldn't work around that fear when I performed. It didn't matter. It was kind of like I had a, a weak foundation. So it didn't matter what acting tools I had. It was, just going to, it was just going to crumble. So what she taught me all about was learning how to come through under duress. And that's a huge part of my class. We have Don Richardson, who taught me all of these great tools about acting and keeping it fun and not having to delve into our past in order to, say, play an emotion of rage. I don't have to think of something that makes me Brad filled with rage. So we have that part. And then we have the part that was taught to me by Dr. Ida Gorbis all about coping with pressure, anxiety, and fear. Those two things, that's your Heller approach.